All right, today I'm gonna present this, go through this paper called Generalized Planning in PDDL Domains with Pre-trained Large Language Models, uh, which is a paper by Tom Silver et al. So just the overview of the presentation, I'm gonna go a bit in the motivation about this paper um, the method they use, the experiments, and of course the uh, discussion and conclusion. So the motivation behind this paper is uh, to see if pre-trained large language models can be used for generalized planning. And uh, the idea, idea here is to use these large language models to generate programs that can solve the main specific uh, planning problems so they don't want to use llms right away to solve planning problems they want to use them in order to generate code but because that's one thing they seem to be pretty good at and how, how do they do this so it's uh this is the pipeline they use um it's good to see uh, like they have the main they have um they give give the model domain and train task they ask the model to summarize the domain and they ask the model to propose a strategy and then based on this strategy it's supposed to generate a program which is here the component, the generalized plan component here. And then they have this automated debugging to make sure that this generalized plan is actually correct. And we'll see each of these parts more in detail later. So here's the pipeline. Um, the first task for the model is to summarize the domain. So it's given uh, one PDDL domain and two PDDL problems. And the output of this is a text summary of the domain. And this is an uh, example of how it can look, the prompt. And then it's asked to propose um, a simple strategy for solving all this problem without using search. And here they found that without using search is an important thing because otherwise it just gives you a search-based solution. And here is the first step where they ask the model to generate a get plan function. So, so this function will basically be like the generalized plan. Um, and they describe what this function should be like. And then for the automated debugging, they execute this get plan function that the model returns. And then there, there's a few different things that can happen. So it can return as an output uh, or it can just crash the program. So if it fails, they have four different types of feedback that they reprompt. Uh, the first one is just give the exception to the, to the LLM and say fix the code. Second one is similar. Um, it's like if it's a timeout, then it gives this specific um, example. And then we have the uh, failure of the actual output that the code produces. So in this case, it would be here, it would be like the, the plan syntax is incorrect. And then finally, they also check if the semantics of the plan is correct. And they use this using the separate tool called val, which is a tool that is used to generate, uh, to validate plans. Uh, so in summary, they have these four steps. Um, they prompt the LLM to summarize a planning domain in, in a natural language then, and then propose a strategy from from this domain, also in natural language. Then they prompt to generate the, the actual program, the actual code, and then automated debugging is used to fix the errors of the implementation. And now for the experiments and results, um, they use these four uh, standard planning domains. Um, the gripper, myconic, ferry, and spanner. 
They use two domains introduced by recent work, which is delivery and forest, and also to introduce one new one, which is heavy. And the heavy object, uh, the heavy domain is to fill a box with items where only heavier items can be underneath. So you cannot place a heavier item on top of a lighter item. And they use several different experimental setups. Uh, the main approach is to use GPT-4. And then they do some ablation. So they remove the chain of fault here. Um, and they just remove these um, steps, like write a short summary and what is the strategy. They also try to remove the debugging components and they also do this no names ablation where they just change the predicates and the operator names to just random stuff and they also check if gpt 3.5 is is good and then there's also some other models from previous work uh and here are just results so you can see that on some domains, they get pretty good score. For example, Forest here gets 100% accuracy, delivery 90%, Gripper. It only fails miserably on Myconic and Spanner, and Heavy is kind of in between. And interesting to note is like in the Heavy domain, actually removing the chain of thought is better than, than going with the whole pipeline, which is weird. And you can also see that uh, without the debugging, it's pretty bad. So, so the debugging really helps. And very interestingly, like no names, this ablation really worsens the performance for most of these, um, which could be the reason for different things. So, if, for example, if you if you would give a human a domain where you just change the names. They probably wouldn't be able to understand it very easily. It would be much more difficult to understand it. So it, it, it kind of has the same intuition like yeah, like in humans. But on the other hand, a symbolic planner like PG3 would um, definitely be able to handle a case where where they. Um, where the names are changed, basically. Uh, so these are the results. They also see that the runtime is pretty much uh, a lot better than fast downward, which is the kind of state of the art symbolic um, the search based planner. And it's interesting though that they only show the runtime on these five domains even though they're actually seven domains so maybe maybe there is some share picking here um and here is some more in-depth analysis they made so it it either solves all the training and the evaluation task or it fails at least on one training task and it fails on all the evaluation tasks so if it if it manages to solve all the training tasks then it kind of has some generalization uh, so it's also it solves the evaluation task otherwise it might just be like memorizing or something even though this is a program but and chat gpt4 fails on the heavy domain because it, it's not able to discover the concepts of like the heaviest overall which is very useful in this case because you want to start with the most heavy objects in the box and uh, for the Myconic domain, I didn't go through it before, but um, so here you have passengers in multiple buildings where each contains an elevator and the people need to be picked up and delivered at different floors. And here it fails because it doesn't uh, know that there exist multiple buildings. And actually to do this, one would need to do some some reasoning because there's not explicitly multiple buildings defined in the domain but it's more like if one floor is never above or below another floor 
we know that these are from separate buildings. So, so that's the case in Myconic, and it requires some reasoning to understand the domain. And in the spanner domain, we have these wrenches, spanners, and we have some nuts. And we want to uh, tight its, uh, tighten these nuts using the wrenches, and only one wrench can be used at most once. And here it fails to realize that you can only walk one way. You cannot, um, you cannot walk back, for example. And you can also see that the automated debugging here is most the mo most increase in performance are from the first step, and it kind of uh, like flattens out. But we can see that actually the automated debugging helps. And now for discussion. So the main question behind this paper is: Is generalized planning now obsolete? When we have these large language models, do we need generalized planners? And the main conclusion here is that no, it is not obsolete. Uh, because as you have seen in the results, you cannot guarantee that these plans, these generalized program plans, will work in all cases. And in most of the domains, they don't work in all cases. But on, in generalized planning, we want to guarantee that the um, planner out, uh, produces a valid plan or an optimal plan in all cases. Um, so planners also remain in uh, domains where there's no simple program. For example, in these domains, in these domains, we know that the domains have a simple generalized plan but in all domains that that's that is not the case right and yeah and then some limitations of future work um in all the domains test as, as i mentioned before in all the domains tested here um it is easy to handcraft a generalized plan so what if we test on domains where it's not easy to handcraft generalized plans? Will it have the same performance? Um, and also some domains m might require more than two examples to really understand what kind of problems could exist in this domain. And some future work would be to detect if there is a simple program. program that exists for the domain. And I also had a comment from a colleague who said that it might be the case that these tested domains are so, so commonly used that there are generalized plans in the training data for the language model and it just reuses those, which could be why it doesn't get when the names are changed um, why it gets so much worse performance is because it just retrieves a program that was already uh, made uh, pre previously um, or so somebody has created a program and, and that's why it gets this uh, good performance or worse performance when uh, the names are changed so I think that, that was it for, for, for this paper. Um, if you have any comments, any questions, uh, anything that I missed about this paper, you can post them in the comment section below. And uh, also, if you want me to do uh, some paper reviews, just comment down below. And hopefully, I, I get through it. And yeah, thanks for watching.